How do folks? My name's Carson Payne, and I'm here today along with uh, Mr. Seth Hart from the Extension Office talking about a little project that you can do for Easter. Well, actually, depending on what kind of design you use, you can uh, make it fit just about any time during the year. But what we're going to do is use some egg shapes and do some incised carving upon it. And uh, it's something that's a nice, simple way to do some wood carving. It's a good beginner's project. And we're hoping that, um, you know, everybody will enjoy doing it. I know I've done several of these, and I really enjoy those. Even though I've got several years of experience, I still like doing the simple stuff because it uh, gives you a whole lot of quick gratification when you can do that. But anyhow, folks, we'll be right back in just a moment to show you how to do the incising. The egg shapes I'm talking about may be like in a three-dimensional egg that's been turned down like this one, or it can even be a little flat egg shape like this. Now, these are good for making like pins, or maybe if you put a screw eye in the top of it, um, making a pendant out of it that you can hang around your neck. <clears throat> and you can decorate it with just about anything you want to. And on this particular egg right here, I just did this one on a round, but you could also do this on the on the flat side of this and get the pretty much same effect. And since it was Easter, I went with the design of three crosses on top of a hill, naturally, uh, depicting the, uh, the scene in the Bible that we read about and that we associate with Easter. But in, in order to do this, first thing you gotta do is have a design. So, and I freehanded this. I, I can't draw a straight line hardly, but I freehanded this and what I did, I started out with, I started out with a hill in the middle, and there's a hill that stands kind of behind it there that comes down here, and then you've got another hill behind over here. Okay, then I took these three hills, and I drew a cross up like this on the main one. Then I had another cross on the side. And then on this one, another cross. Just simple little line drawings. Now, there's a couple of ways you could try to carve this into the egg. You can use a V-tool, but I found with these rounded shape like this, a V-tool tends, uh, tends to jerk out some of, the, some of the grain and it doesn't hardly cut as smooth. One of the better ways to do it is to take and use just a, a uh, point of a knife and for this, I'm going to be using a detail blade that I have, that I have taken and reshaped. It's probably about three quarters of an inch long, but it is a detail blade. And if you'll notice, it's got, it goes down to a point, so I've got a point to use on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use what we call V-cuts to make this. That's where you make one line down one side, just a slight angle. Then you make another cut down that same line just at an opposite angle from what you've got. So we're going to start right here, and we're going to start with uh, the cross right here and just make a, a small incision. I just thought of something else. We'll be right back. Hang on just a second. In case you all are wondering why I stopped, it hit me all of a sudden. I didn't have my safety glove on, on my holding hand, neither did I have my thumb guard on for the knife, for the hand that has the knife. You gotta stress safety because if you don't wear your glove and your thumb uh, placed, you're more likely to cut yourself. And believe me, I have bled many times over wood carving. And uh, that was before I learned better. And, but use your safety glove on your holding hand, a uh, cut resistant glove of at least five, this one is super heavy because I, I have a tendency to be a little bit clumsy sometimes. This one has a cut resistance of nine. But anyhow, we're going to get back into this. You make a incision right there. Now, you could do it either way. Just That's just where I start. And then we'll come down here and we'll make an incision right down the middle of that one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get the incisions that we're starting out with made. before we do the V-cuts.
Now, to do the V-cuts, you just lean your knife a little bit and just using the very point, you come down through here and you take a little chip out on that side. Turn it over and take a little chip out on this side. And it makes, I don't know whether the camera will allow it or not, but it makes like a V-shaped cut right there. Okay, now we're gonna come up here on the cross pieces of the cross and do the same exact thing. One side. My incision's not hardly deep enough to get that. And then we'll do it on the other side. Go to the opposite direction. Slight V cut. And there you can see where the, the first cross is cut into that. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing. Oh, I'm right-handed, so I do everything left to right for some reason or other. So we're gonna come right down through here. Sometimes you may have to make your incision twice in order to uh, get it to come out in case you don't get it deep enough to begin with. But that's okay. There we go on that part. See, I need to take just a little bit more on this one side right here to make the cross more even. And then you can go back and make another cut if you need to to clean up little fuzzies that may be inside the cross. Okay. Now you're just cutting in with the very tip of your knife is what you're cutting in with. And then those little chips will just fall right out of there, out of the way. There you go. There's the three crosses that are cut in. Now this is called incising is what it is. And, and in relief carving, uh, they, uh, they use that quite a bit. I need to clean this up right here or it's not hardly deep enough. There we go. Now we've got, we've got the uh, boulders, the hills whatever you want to call these three things that the crosses are sitting on top of. Now I'm going to do those a little bit different. I'm just going to make one incision right in the middle. And I'm just going to make a cut on one side of that. And store, instead of it being a V cut, it'll just be like a, a stop cut that I'm doing here. 
And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to I'm going to start out here where I started. Just take a little little chip out, and we'll go all the way around that right here. Now you don't want to use a lot of force for this because there's a good chance your knife could slip and you'd wind up cutting yourself uh, in a deep way and you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. I'm going to do this one just a little bit deeper. To get a little bit more pronounced cut out of it. Then I'm going to come over here to this second heel that, that actually is in behind the first one. Do the same thing, uh, uh, an incision. Then we're going to come in here and just cut a little chip out of it as we go down. And if it doesn't come loose right off the bat, you may need to go back and, and re-incise your first one. And you can look at it and see what needs to be cleaned up a little bit. There's a little spot right there that didn't come out real quick. Okay. There we got that side. Now as we go to the opposite side, See, if my thumb had been under that when that slipped like that, I would have wound up with, bleed, uh, with a bleeding thumb on my left hand. But because of the glove, it kept it from doing that. So remember, always don't pick your knife up until you've actually got your glove on your hand. We're going to cut that one in just a little bit more because it didn't pop loose like it should have. See, there we go. We got it to come right off that time. As we come on back around the hill here to, to make it look like it's actually in, in behind the first one. Now, if you can see that where, the, where it's incised in and you can see from the different shapes. Now, there's a few little pencil marks left here. And what you do with those is just take a simple pencil eraser. And erase it off. You can do it with an eraser or you can take it to the to the sink. And this one, in fact, may require that to get rid of it because this is not a sanded smooth egg. It helps if you if your egg has been sanded smooth already. But this one's still a little bit rough. But you can get those pencil marks off just with, with an eraser and erasing those off. And then when you start to finish these, you can do it several different ways. You could take, and if you wanted to paint it, you could use a shade of brown that you uh, want to use on your uh, heels. You could paint the background a real light blue to denote the sky, maybe even put a few clouds in it. And then, you can take and where your incisions are with a cross, you can take and put like a dark brown paint or whatever in that. Now, that, that, that's one, one way you could do it. You could even take this and just stain it all one color. And uh, when you stain something and wipe it off, where all the incisions are, it'll be darker inside those incisions instead of on the outside. Now, this is with a round shape, but if you're going to use a flat two-dimensional shape it's it's very similar you're going to have to do a little bit more work on this than you would on that egg because it's already rounded if you were doing it out of a shape like this there may be some little pieces like when I, when I saw this out with the bandsaw it's not perfectly egg shaped and you may need to, sh to shape the outside shape just a little bit if there's something that you don't like about it that you want it to be a little bit smoother and just shape it up to where it looks more like an egg shape. And then to get a rounded look to it, what you would do is take and round your egg off. 
you would imagine a line running right up the center. Well, we won't imagine it. We'll draw it in here so that you can see what I'm talking about. Well, I tell you, I couldn't draw a straight line, but that's close to the center. And, and in rounding the egg off, you would want to round toward that center point to where it would actually slope each direction away from that center point. And rounding it off. And you would round it off to where you met this back edge back here, where it goes from the center point and rounds all the way to this edge down here. And then for the tip of it, you know, an egg is rounded and it kind of kind of slopes down as it goes up to the point similar to this one that here you can see on the uh, on the solid egg. But what you would do, you would just take a little bit more, still rounding from that center point. You would take a little bit more on this this tip up here to make it seem like it was it was slope. Well, not actually make it seem like it because you're actually going to slope it down and make it a little bit a uh, little bit thick, less thick at the top than you would in the very center of it. But you would, you would take and, and round this off until it slopes down to this back edge. Now, after, after you get through rounding the, the egg off to where you want it just right, you know, you can still see all these facets. You can always, if you want it to be a little bit smoother and you don't want to leave the knife cuts on it, and you're going to make a pendant or a brooch out of it, it's fine to take a little bit of sandpaper and just smooth it down to get rid of the facets. And then you see how it would all be rounded over. But you would do that all the way around the egg to make it rounded off and look more like an egg shape. The main thing to remember in rounding off, you're just taking the sharp edges off of it. We're trying to make it look more, as much as possible, like a, an egg would look in nature is what we're trying to do because in nature you don't see any uh, real sharp lines cut out in nature anywhere at all. So everything is rounded and, and as Seth likes to call it, organic. <laughs> That's a word I wasn't familiar with so I got to running around with him and then I, then I learned that, that term, what he meant by organic. And that's just something that looks like it's, you know, it's got shapes that you find in nature not squared off, not squared off. So you would do that and you would round that egg off all the way around, top, sides, and bottom until you've got it rounded off to where it's more like look, you were looking down on an egg and it just laying flat. Or if you were to take a section and just saw that egg right down through there, it would be the same things. Now you can use this type of egg for the same reason, for the same way rather that you use this one. Because you can take your pencil and put your design like this. And if you're going to do the three uh, three crosses, you do the similar thing after you get it rounded off. The first thing is rounding it off and getting it to the point you want it that way. And then after you get this in, you come in here and you can draw your crosses in. I have a tendency I want to draw the center cross taller to bring emphasis on it. The ones on the side actually look like they're a little bit farther back because of the smallness in comparison to the center cross. And you can do this the same way. And then again, in size with your detail blade is what you do. And after you get this finished, you can paint it with acrylics. You can stain it. Uh, you can leave it natural if you want to. It's just however you want to display the piece of wood that you've got. And that's basically how you can do it. Now, this is just the design that I chose. You can take and use several different kinds of designs uh, that you want to paint, paint. You can use something like this. something like this. Now these aren't carved, they're just drawn and colored, but you could do the same thing and actually draw the design into the egg and then paint it after you get it uh, carved out. It's hard to separate pages whenever you've got 
safety glove on. There's a, a few. And then this one is one that would be real simple to do. And it's kind of interesting. It's actually got a chicken's face or a chick's face on the front of it with a little bit of design on, on the bottom. But you could do that very simply with incising. But uh, after you get it incised, after you get it carved, just paint it. And uh, you've got an egg that you can use. If, if you use a flat piece, you can use it as a brooch by putting a pin back on it. Or you can use it as a pendant by putting a screw hook on the very top to put the necklace through. And then if there's something you want to sit on a shelf, you can use an egg-shaped piece of wood. This isn't exactly egg-shaped, but it's, it's fairly close. But you can get the idea if it, if it was exactly egg-shaped. And you could design it, decorate it the way you wanted to, paint it, carve it the way you want it to. And you could uh, set it on a shelf and look at it. Or even if, it, if you wanted to, you could put it on a base to elevate it whenever you, wherever you were having it set. And that's pretty much how you carve an egg. And uh, we, we chose this because we're only uh, two or three weeks away from Easter, so we're ready to have Easter dinner and eat chocolate eggs. And marshmallow field eggs is my favorite. I don't know what y'all like, but that's what I like the best. And uh, that's about it. So we appreciate it and hope y'all have learned quite a bit from this.